What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video guys, it's been a while since I've talked about DeFi Kingdoms. So we're going to talk about DeFi Kingdoms again. Yes, I've been farming DeFi Kingdoms for like two months now or three months and it is straight fire sauce. And what they got coming? <laughs> Dude, you'll be surprised. You'll love this junk. But guys, don't sleep on the team. The team is fire sauce. I'm going to go ahead and talk to you guys about Crystalville. And is this going to be bearish for Jewel? Like, really? Dude, think about it. Is it? Because, I mean, they're just launching another token. I mean, what's the point of Jewel? We're going to go ahead and explain all that and more. But let's go ahead and talk about this article. So the TLDR on this article is that they are launching a new land. It's called Crystalville. Crystalville TLDR is going to be on Avalanche. So right now, the original DeFi Kingdoms is played on Harmony One. They're trying to go multi-chain. This is also why I'm very bullish on DeFi Kingdoms. So when they're going multi-chain, they're going to take part in Avalanche by starting a new land that is over there from Avalanche. So over on Crystal Vale, you're going to have Avalanche over with the OG DeFi Kingdoms that's going to be over on Harmony One. So right here, it states all of the core features of DeFi Kingdoms will be available natively in Crystal Vale. So gameplay in DeFi Kingdoms is centered around the heroes. And they aren't kidding about that. It, I spent several hours researching how these different heroes work. I'll be doing another video on this kind of explaining it. And you can make some serious money in this play to earn and even summoning. I'll explain it to you guys. It is straight fire sauce and it's pretty intense. So make sure you guys stay tuned. I'll be dropping a new video on that. So Crystal Vale will also have its own Gen Zero heroes. So they'll be launching those over there in Crystal Vale. They'll also have unique quests, resources, buildings, NPCs, equipment, and pets. Hint, hint, something really, really cool is the items and resources over in Crystal Vale may not be available in DeFi Kingdoms on Harmony One. So you'll have to bring them back and forth to build something that you normally wouldn't be able to build. Guys, these guys think of everything. It is straight fire. So each realm of DeFi Kingdom will have its own power token. So this is going to be farmed in the gardens. Yes, they're going to have farming over on Avalanche and they are going to be using Jewel and they're going to center it around Jewel. So traditionally, or actually in the beginning, in order to acquire crystal, what you're going to need to use is you're going to need to use jewel and you're going to have to stake that and farm the crystal token. So this is going to be bullish for the jewel token because you're going to need to acquire it to stake and earn crystal. This is going to be the native token on Avalanche. The expansion strategy is to set up a reward earning jewel holders with crystal airdrops. So you can get airdrops for holding Jewel and I'm sure staking in the bank. So at first, really the only way to get Crystal is going to be single staking bridge Jewel tokens into the Ice Gardens. So players will also be able to find different things to be able to use with their Jewel tokens, their hero NFTs, and so on. So right now you can farm Jewel on Trader Joe and Pangolin. You can earn those rewards and so on. So pretty good. You can also earn Crystal through single staking of Jewel and the decks will have incentivized pools in the ice gardens that emit crystal as rewards. Similar to the same way Jewel played out. The rewards for staking will be split between unlocked and locked crystal. The initially high emission rate that declines each epoch. I'm not going to go into this like intensely, but it's literally just DeFi Kingdoms in Avalanche. That's all. It's on Crystal Vale. Instead of being Serendale on Harmony, it will be Crystal Veil, so something to keep in mind. They will also have new artwork and design. But now let me go ahead and build this bullish case for DeFi Kingdoms. I put together this note for you guys because I'm going to start using notes from now on because I think it's a good thing to do so you guys can kind of see the thoughts laid out. If you guys didn't know, I have ADHD, so focus on thoughts. Mm, they go in and out just like here and there. So first, I want to go over this. DeFi Kingdoms is going multi-chain. This is massive because there's a lot of tokens that literally stay specific on one chain. You cannot get everyone in that aspect and people hop from chain to chain. However, if you're multi-chain, at one time this chain may be hot and this chain may be hot, but your game is multi-chain so everyone can play on each and every chain. Crystal will allow people that think they missed on Jewel actually get in quote unquote early. 
So first off, people think this is going to be bearish for Joule, but in reality, let me go ahead and give you these facts. Joule is needed to get more crystal, one. Two, Joule is needed for LP pools and trading. Two, this is on Crystal Veil, so the crystal is going to be paired with Joule. Three, Joule is needed to buy and rent heroes. You know, back in the traditional uh, DeFi kingdoms, Veil with Serendel and so on. But people are still going to want to buy and rent these heroes because they can use them in quests, so it's still needed. Joule is needed for potential airdrops. If you guys don't believe me, how people value airdrops. Just take a look at what happens when a protocol announces a airdrop. The token literally goes up like this. It's because people are banking on getting those airdrops. Also, another way you can look at Jewel is that it will be looked at as being gold compared to the other coins like Crystal being silver because it is the premium asset. Next is it has a maximum supply. Jewel is not infinitely minted. Now, a project that, quote, I wouldn't say did it wrong, um, but Axe Infinity in SLP, it has an infinite supply, and you guys can see the price of the token. It is literally down only. Jewel is literally up. It's If you guys trend it out and do a max chart, it's up only. This they, These guys are masters of tokenomics and gaming. It's crazy, and they built a really good game. Also, you will need Jewel for summoning and buying land. So more and more people are going to want to mint these heroes. They can make money by flipping. They can make money by foraging, mining, etc. I'll leave a detailed video on how you guys can gamify and make the most out of your heroes. Don't worry. Stay tuned. Next, the team is constantly building and delivering. These guys are literally coming up with something new every single day. You guys know what I say all the time on this channel. Invest in people, not Ponzi's. You want to look for very strong communities. Second, the community is unmatched. I haven't seen any other community like DeFi Kingdoms. These guys are, again, always delivering. Second, you literally go into the Discord or in Telegram and it's message after message after message. People don't stop. That's how much people love this game. And they haven't even fully developed. They only have two of the quests launched right now and they don't even have Crystal Veil. So it literally, they just have a community of people on Harmony 1. Wait, what's Harmony 1? That's the point. My point exactly. It's not on like Avalanche. It's not on Polygon. It's not on Phantom. Everyone's talking about those chains. Barely anyone talks about Harmony 1. The point is, there's a small community over there. And now they are opening up to a brand new community on Avalanche. Everyone over there is farming. When you're farming on Trader Joe or Pangolin, why are you going to do that when you can come over to Crystal Vale and actually have fun farming? Think about it. Four, the team is a expert in tokenomics. I mean, dude, seriously, just look at the price. It's like nuts and ham. And I want to play this clip for you. Um, so this new power token, what would it be used for? It'd be used by Jewel. If you are in a, a made up ABC realm and you have that realm's power token and you um, have heroes that you'd like to summon, you will go to that portal and summon, right? Um, and if you are in harmony, you will do that with Jewel. Um, let's just think about long-term balancing mechanic here. Again, pro really protecting the value of Jewel. How does this all make sense? Um, Hang on, did, did you hear that? Really protecting the value of Jewel. How does this all make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and play this. I'm gonna speed up, or I'm gonna speed it up a bit. If, if I have power token at price, let's say, 1.5 times that of existing price of Jewel. And I am in the new realm, and I would like to summon. And the summoning costs, for the most part, are equal, right? Let's just say it's 30 power token, or 30 Jewel, to, um, to summon, but the price is different, right? Power token is 1.5 times more expensive. Participants will be incentivized to go to the cheaper token to sell their power token to buy potentially Jewel. That means price of Jewel go up. That means that, that means that Jewel will be used as the main summoning realm, right? So it's a long-term balancing mechanic. We are not leaving any realm behind. If a realm becomes severely undervalued, if that power token drops under the rest, the smart players will look at those realms and say, why would I summon my realm when it's 1.5 times more expensive to do so? I'm going to hop over to this other realm and do it there. That's going to provide like this living, breathing economy over multiple chains long term. If we end up with like four or five expansions, we are going to have multiple power tokens that are all hopefully um, staying within somewhat of a, an equilibrium. So the real value of um, the real storehold of value, I think it's going to be in our NFTs because your NFT can be bridged across all these expansions. It can be something where it's cheaper. That, it can get dude. new genes from you know new gene sets of the various expansions. It can go on different quests and level up and get resources and equipment. The long-term value really is going to be our hero NFTs, I think. Whereas all the power tokens will be unique to those realms and govern the tokenomics in each realm while having that balance mechanic between them. 
I hope all that makes sense. That's a lot of new information. If there are questions, please do put them in. But this is very important. We've you know, not only talked internally, we've talked to multiple partners. You know, I've talked to, to Flu, who knows the space very well. You know, we've talked to um, you know, it's many experts. And this is for so, I mean, that, that's kind of like enough at a hint, hint. But um, guys, look, these guys are experts in the tokenomics, experts in the game. And one thing you guys need to note about this, they're going to do any and everything they can to protect the value of Jewel. That's how it rolls. And guys, there's going to be more people interested in this game. And he makes a really good point about the value of these heroes. That is where the true value is going to be, especially the Gen Zeros. Guys, I'll make a video on why the Gen Zeros are so valuable and I'll explain it to you guys. I'll probably wait to drop it till after the Gen Zeros on Crystal Veil is minted because like, why not? I'm just kidding guys. I'll drop it before just so you guys can understand it. But it's mind blowing how much intricate detail they literally put into this. You can tell the team at DeFi Kingdoms is trying to build a game that has never been built before with pristine tokenomics. Just take a look into it. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next video so you guys can understand. Next, there are way too many use cases built around the NFTs and heroes for sustainable play to earn. There's literally so many different things you can do. And we haven't even got into what can go next. What is next? Oh yeah, unlocking the locked jewel. So there's going to be more and more coming for it. And guys, they're building more lands. Just imagine what type of quests they are. Just think of the game RuneScape. RuneScape, when you had your guy, you had so many different skills. You had archery, prayer, you had health con or constitution, whatever you want to call it. Um, you had attack, defense, you had mining, you had uh, archery. There were so many different skills that you could have. And with DeFi Kingdoms, we've only gotten a couple. There's literally only like four or five different skills. Just imagine how many more skills they can build. I remember how successful that game of RuneScape was. It was massively successful. Just, just think about it. Now, I spent so many, I, not hours, I spent so many days, like days put together, playing RuneScape, doing so many different things, leveling up my guy, and I was like, all to what? Like, it was just a waste of time. Now people can actually use this, play and earn money and do this as a job. Like, that's why I quit video games, is because I was wasting so much time and it was so addictive and I couldn't get out of it. This is the point guys. Looking at this game, seeing what they're doing, it has all the steps of being a very addictive game that people will love to play. Just watch. Uh, of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Again, these guys know how to create a great game and just look at it from a gamer's point of view. I used to be a big gamer and this is a strategy game that is similar to RuneScape. Again, let me lay out these things. You can level up players, you can earn and find NFTs, worth value, and have a randomization factor. So like you can randomly do these quests. Sure, you may get a piece of junk here and there, but there's that one chance that you get something really, really valuable. So people keep coming back. Just think about this. When you go to a casino, why don't they just let you win every single time? Because you win every single time, it would be too easy. However, why don't they let you lose every single time? Because if you lose every single time, you won't come back. But if you let people win, sometimes they're going to come back. It was also back with a psychologist. Uh, I think it was like a Skinner's theory or something like that. So basically with Skinner's theory of conditioning, what this means is like, we're, we're going to relate it to the game. You realize you click the quest, you hopefully get the items and inside your brain, it's like euphoria. This is a so awesome. Oh, 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 I got a prize. And then like, Outside of that, you play the game, you play the quest, and you don't win anything. However, you still have that um, reaction inside your brain that is just like a feeling of euphoria, whether you won something in the quest or not, because that anticipation of getting something before that quest is completed is more than the actual item itself. Just think about this. When people win the lottery, they are more anxious and more excited when scratching off those numbers than they are when they actually win because they see the results. So this is what the game is playing on. This is why these games are so addictive and you guys can see it by how many people play and earn these games. Similar to Axe Infinity. Even though the game is just, I hear, super boring, people keep playing it because they love the rush. 
That's what people are looking for. And this is why it's different than Axe Infinity. In my opinion, this could be bigger than Axe Infinity, not financial advice, guys, but Axe Infinity is simple. Like you play, you earn, you get SLP. This is awesome. But they actually add different items in this and they have their own marketplace. I will explain that in the later video, but it is straight gamification. It is fire. Next, newer users can play by renting a hero. So you don't need to have a sponsorship. Like I hear in Axe Infinity, you literally have to like pony up thousands of dollars in order to actually just start playing. With Jewel and DeFi Kingdoms, all you gotta do is rent a hero and you can start doing the quests, earn some of the items, and then those items that you earn, you can sell them, buy more Jewel, and eventually buy your own hero. These heroes are going to be going down in price, obviously the non-rare heroes, as more and more come onto the market, and I'll explain that in another video to explain how there is sustainability in the heroes. So you can still play. Next, so when you earn and find NFTs, like I mentioned to you, it is completely random. So you can get an ultra rare and like a not so rare. In these quests, they create sticking power because you keep coming back because you want that euphoric rush. Just try the game. You will understand what I'm talking about. Even though it's literally just winning just a, a dumb JPEG or like a fish or like whatever. It's so goofy. But you still have that euphoric rush. That's what people are looking for. And that's why they play these games. Anyways, um, next is they created their own decks, unlike other NFT games. Wanna know what I mean? Look at Axe Infinity. What are they doing now after they launched their protocol? They didn't launch their own decks, but wait, now they launched their own chain and now they launched their own decks. Just look, people are farming SLP and Axie to earn Ronin. Just think about it. Why Ronin? Oh wait because you created your own decks to create more value for the coin. Anyways, first need to uh, fix that inflationary supply, then you can fix problems. And now the music, guys. This is where it's at. If you guys don't think this is fire, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's like classic RuneScape, like literally. It was straight classic. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. This is the case for DeFi Kingdoms. And of course, guys, this game is just gonna be nuts and ham. There's so many other things coming. And guys, TLDR, invest in people, not Ponzi's. There are so many Ponzi's out there, but there's not a lot of people who are building all kinds of junk. Let's go ahead and leave you guys with a wisdom one line. Acts chapter 14, verses 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. Be righteous. I also want to sum this up about DeFi kingdoms. I am a gamer. I understand this stuff. This is what I... I used to play this all the time. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but being a gamer and playing this game, I haven't found any other game I've actually been addicted to ever since I stopped gaming. I'm not saying I'm addicted to, well, actually I kind of am. I kind of like these quests. It's so much fun, but still the point is guys, they created a very addictive game and being a gamer, I see that. And if I can see that it has that pull for something, I know it has that pull for someone else. Just try the game, play it, and then you will understand with the value of Jewel what it can potentially do. Guys, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just take a look at Axe Infinity as your case study. And if Axe Infinity can do something like that and have such a great community, just look at the community at DeFi Kingdoms. It is unmatched it's nuts and ham not financial advice not a financial advisor if you guys want to jump in discord learn about different strategies and farms that i'm in and actually see how i'm playing DeFi kingdoms well you guys can jump in the discord patreon link is in the description below if you guys want to know if discord is for you well if you guys are new to farming and brand new to cryptocurrency i would recommend you actually start doing some more research learn how to set up a main mask Learn how to LP with different tokens. Just kind of get your feet wet. Just so you can have an understanding about DeFi and cryptocurrency. Because in my opinion, this is going to disrupt the space. And once you get a good footing, I think the Discord would be good for you. Because it's a little more advanced. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one. You guys can also catch me on tweeters. Uh, it's at rentahomefast. Like literally, at rentahomefast.